Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and we are continuing our year-long series on municipal elected leaders from across this great country. And today we're heading to my home province of Alberta to talk to the town of Edson's mayor, Kevin Sahara. Kevin, your mayor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. Great to be with you. So, Kevin, let's get the first question out of the way, because that's the million dollar question I like to start every interview off with. And you're no exception. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Well, it actually started when I was in high school. I was a work experience student uh, at the local radio station. I started covering town council meetings uh, as part of broadcast journalism. I got really interested. One of my family's close friends was an administrator for the community I lived in in Athabasca. And uh, yeah, I got, really, really enjoyed it, uh, learning about municipal politics and the issues. And um, so a by-election happened to come up and I was encouraged to run and I put my name forward. And actually two seats ended up being becoming available. And uh, there were four people running and I won along with my uh, former elementary school principal. So it was uh, quite an interesting thing. I think I was 18 or 19 years old at the time, very young. And uh, that's where I got, kind of got my feet wet. Um, and then I left that community uh, to take a promotion with my work uh, to Edson. I uh, really missed being a part of council and eventually decided to run for Edson Town Council uh, back in, I believe it was 20 or 2007, I believe it was. Okay, so I, I try to do as little bit of research on my guests as possible because I like to learn from them because I try to put myself in the perspective of my listeners and my viewers. Um, I knew you were a councillor for the town of Edson. I knew you were the mayor of the town of Edson. I did not know you were the councillor for the town of Athabasca, I'm assuming? Yes, I was, yeah, for uh, for a very short time because uh, I did get in on a by-election and then I ended up leaving to take a job here in Edson. So how does a guy who I went through broadcast journalism as well in Ontario, how does a guy from a small town of Athabasca decide municipal politics is where I want to help out in my community? Because you could have done the nonprofits, you could have done volunteerism, but you said, let's go municipally because I think that's the best way I can give back to my community. So let's go back to that first election in Athabasca, the by-election. What made you say, okay, this is how I want to give back? I think it was just a sense of trying something, see if I can do it. Um, and, you know, when I was back in Athabasca, there was uh, some challenges with a community center that was uh, in the community. And uh, there was a report done about recreation facilities in our community and uh, possibly looking at building a new multi-use facility. And of course, that, that sparked some controversy in the community. So um, so I, when I got involved in in politics in Athabasca, I got involved in the committee that was looking at the new multi-use facility and we had a, a public open house and I, and I remember this like it was yesterday and uh, it was at our old community center that was very underutilized, was needing a whole bunch of money put into it. We had a curling rink that was uh, aged as well as an arena and we we're sitting there and we invited our county partners at the time and it was the county residents uh, in the crowd, they were saying, yes, you need to build something like get on with it. Like, why are we going to waste money at this old old facility? And uh, some of the town residents were were pushing back because, you know, it's going to impact taxes. And um, one of my grandmother's old friends was there and he was given the gears to, to counsel how he couldn't afford it and all this stuff. And and I remember talking to my grandmother afterwards and she said, you know what, Kevin, you're the future generation. Um, back when I was your age, we helped fundraise for the pool in Athabasca. Now it's your guys' turn to build something new. And that guy spends six months down south every year. So if anybody can afford it, it's him, right? So um, so uh, my grandmother really instilled in me that, you know, you, if, if you have a vision, if you have a plan, if there's something you want to do, just go and try to accomplish it. Don't listen to the naysayers. Um, obviously, as as politicians, we're always looking out for the bottom line and, and understand that uh, tax impacts have real impacts on residents. But at the end of the day, you're trying to build community. And I think that's why I got involved and why I want to stay involved. I had a taste of provincial politics for a while working at the legislature, and it's just not my cup of tea. 
So when you moved to the town of Edson, did you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to get back in the political realm? Or in 2007, when you put your name forward in that uh, that election, that actual municipal election, not a by-election, but the actual scheduled election, did you think, okay, let's do it? Or was there some apprehensive that, okay, I tried it, I did the uh, politics thing, I'm done, I don't need it anymore? Or was the itch always there? The itch was always there. That was one thing I really, really missed was being involved. And uh, when I moved to Edson shortly after they had a municipal election and I went to the forums and I was listening to the candidates and I, you know, I was a fresh face moving to the community and I seen a whole bunch of things that really kind of shocked me because I moved from a very small town to a much larger town. And I felt like um, they were further behind uh, and they have all this oil and gas wealth and, you know, they have a really strong economy and and listening to the, the candidates and, and the uh, um, it was an interesting election experience. And and I think the thing that really got me is nobody would really campaigned. There were no election signs. They had a forum and that was basically it. Nobody was out door knocking. So uh, when I decided to run, it was actually with my buddies in a poker game and we're talking about politics and we're like, I'm going to run. And I was kind of joking about it. I wasn't really serious. And it was like, okay, let's start planning the campaign. And uh, so one of my best friends became my campaign manager. And we went and door knocked and door knocked like half the town and put election signs, actually campaigned. Uh, And that was really shocking to a lot of people because uh, many of the counselors were long-term counselors. They didn't really do any of that kind of stuff. And it, it it made things a little exciting and, and actually changed the course because now that's the standard in our community. So uh, pretty proud of that fact. Um, and that's one of the reasons I, I got involved when I got to Edson is because I just seen so many so much potential. And uh, I finished first overall and uh, I felt like I had a lot of support. And uh, yeah, so I won, I won on council twice. And then uh, unfortunately I had to move again uh, to take a job in Edmonton and then I can move back. Uh, had got married and um, came out. I want to talk about that 20, uh, 2007 election for a second, because you seem like a guy who has the pulse of your community, especially if you're in the journalism business. If you're dealing with the media on a day to day basis, you know what's the stories that are happening in your community. But when you door knock, though, it's a different beast in itself because you learn the micro issues. You think you know the issues that your community is facing. But then when you talk to people at their doorstep, it's a completely unique beast. So for you in that 2007 election, were there issues that you heard at the doorsteps that you went, whoa, why is this being talked about now? I thought it would have been addressed or I'm glad someone's talking about it because if elected, I can help address it while on council. Yeah, so the 2007 election was interesting. So I, I worked at the radio station here. So it was well known in the community who I was. And of course, I had to step back from being on air while the election was going on. So uh, my campaign manager, my best friend, Peter Taylor, who's on council now, um, he uh, he was really pushing me to door knock. And I'm not a door knocking guy. Some politicians love that. That's not my, my gig. I'm a policy guy. Um, so the first door I knocked on, I had the door slammed in my face, like absolutely slammed in my face. Oops. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And that was the only door slam. Um, everybody else was uh, very kind and uh, they had questions. But you know, there wasn't really any major issue. I think the, the biggest thing I heard at the time was we need facilities, we need investment into our community. Um, we need uh, younger faces, uh, newer faces on council. And so uh, that was something I was running on, on, on building facilities. And uh uh, because I'm, it's always easy to run in your first election, right? Because you don't have a record and you can say and do basically what you want um, and, and not have any accountability for that, unfortunately. But um, so it's, it's pretty easy being in the new face, especially if you're known in a, in a small community. Um, but as time goes on, of course, you get you have a track record. And you have to defend the decisions that you've made. So. This is a a multi-pronged question I'm going to ask because it's a unique situation you're in. You you win a by-election in the town of Athabasca. You win multiple elections in the town of Edson. What's that experience like walking into the voting booth for yourself and seeing your name on that ballot? Because everyone remembers their first time they get to vote for themselves. I remember the first time I got to vote for myself. And I can tell you, I still have shivers thinking about that moment, walking into that ballot box and putting an X beside my name. For you, what was that experience like? 
it was exciting and nerve wracking at the same time because uh, when you go to vote, you're looking at the crowd that's there and you're like, I don't know any of these people. Like, or like I'm, I'm done. Like I shouldn't even vote for myself. It's probably a waste of a vote. Right. So, um, and, and people, you don't know, you think you have a good sense at the doors when you're door knocking, like the support was overwhelming. And, but that day I'm thinking, I'm not going to win this thing. There's no way I'm going to win this thing. Like people don't really know me. Um, and, uh, so it, it's nerve wracking. And I do recall like in Athabasca, it was my hometown. So I knew a lot of people by election Four people running some with a lot of experience. And I remember counting the ballots and sitting in the chambers as they're counting the ballots. I was sweating. Like I was sick to my stomach and, uh, you win and, and it's always surprising and humbling and, and exciting. Um, and yeah, when does uh, when does that excitement turn to oh god what have i gotten myself into now because now the the weight and responsibility of the decisions you make in that council chambers are going to affect the day-to-day -day lives of the people that surround you you are no longer that person that can go to the grocery store and just go grocery shopping you're going to get stopped and talk about the issues that are important to the people when does that moment hit for you or has it hit and if so does it still keep you up at night thinking i better make the best decision i can when voting on this x issue yeah you know it's uh when you win an election, you're so excited afterwards that you just want to get work done, right? And you're you're gelling with a new council, uh, new council members. Um, you have to, like, as mayor, you have to set up the committees and, and you're meeting with administration. Um, so it doesn't really hit you until, like, probably a few weeks, maybe even months afterwards, where you say, what was I thinking? Because now the pressure's on, right? You're trying to deliver results. And, you know, politics is an interesting beast, and I don't think... From a general public point of view, they you know there's a view of government as this big evil entity, and um, you know politicians don't know what they're doing. There's so many things that are out of your control. Uh, no matter what plan you put in place, uh, the discussions you have are things you don't anticipate, um, and, and I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges, especially through COVID, um, that really upset the apple cart in trying to achieve uh, your strategic planning, your strategic goals. Uh, we're going to talk about the town of Edson here in a few seconds, but I want to continue on uh, on you as mayor and councillor. The life of a politician, particularly at the municipal level, is the first line of politics in this world. You don't go to Edmonton to do your job. You don't go to Ottawa to do your job. You go to your grocery store. You go to your post office. You are in your community 24-7. So you are mayor or councillor at all times. In your time of being on council and as mayor, have you found that work-life balance uh, sweet spot right now where you can be Kevin from time to time, but also know that at a moment's notice, you have to turn that on and be mayor for an hour or two hours if you go grocery shopping. If someone has an issue, they want to address it, you have to help them address it at that moment. Yeah, I, people are really respectful. I find like when I'm out in public, especially with my family, um, that they don't really engage in in that way. Um, or if they do, they, they they say, "Can I give you a call later to talk about this issue?" Um, I'm public facing in my job, uh, my full time job, because being mayor, it's a it's a full time job with part time hours. Um, but and part time uh, pay, <laughs> and yeah, and part time pay. Um, which brings up a whole other discussion we can get into because it's really a, a funny discussion. But um, so I'm, I'm public facing. So a lot of times people just pop by my office here at work. My, my employer, thankfully, is very understanding of that, where you can have those quick conversations or quick phone calls. And today with technology, it's usually email messages, texts, uh, things of that nature. Um, it's, in, it's interesting that uh, it's a lot different being mayor than councillor. And I don't think I realized that when I ran for mayor, how, how different it is because every single complaint seems to come to the mayor, no matter what it is um, and uh, how trivial or, or huge it is. Um, and, and trying to educate the public that mayors don't direct where the greater goes. Like I can't get the greater to come and plow in front of your house. We have policy in place and that's where that higher level that that council works on and that, um, the decisions that council make, I only have one vote in that in that decision, right? So I could disagree as much as I want. We've had some decisions that I have, 
Um, but at the end of the day, I got to go out there and, and give the message and, and take the complaints and, and be supportive of the decision of council. So uh, it's an interesting dynamic. We don't have strong mayor powers here, so I, I can't. Yet. Uh, Who yet, knows? Yeah, what? <laughs> maybe if I move to Ontario, maybe. But, uh, you know, I can't sign off and just make things happen like that. It, it takes a team. It takes a council. It takes a great administration as well. And uh, um, there's sometimes challenges because uh what works for, for the politicians and councils don't necessarily the recommendation from administration. So um, it's, it's a, it's, I think it's a really good uh, system in politics, unlike the party system where everybody has their own single vote and they're independent of each other. Um, and you try to come to compromise and make those right decisions moving forward. So you bring up a good point, and I want to ask this question to yourself because you've been on both sides of the table as a councillor and as a mayor. There are no party systems in municipal politics in Alberta. I don't want to say other provinces because BC, Montreal has them as well. Um, but in Alberta, you run as an independent. How important is it to have that respect around that council table? Because at the end of the day, if your decide doesn't win, you still have to go into the next meeting or talk about another issue with your fellow councillor or uh, as mayor, talk to your councillors or councillors have to talk to you as mayor. How important is respect around the council table? Uh, it's really important. And it's really uh, important that trust factor as well. Uh, to when sometimes you get pretty heated about issues that you're pretty passionate about um, and there's impacts and, and there's certain things you want to see but um, try to make the best argument you can and at the end of the day you need to have conversations afterwards and um, their colleagues their friends um, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, uh, serving with a very long term counselor and we had very differing views on some issues and you know we would always have a discussion afterwards it was never personal it was never uh, anything like that and sometimes you kind of poke each other in the meeting a little bit to see what kind of reaction you can get and you have to realize at the end of the day you got to have some fun as well and uh, uh, not to take things personally and you win some you lose some um, and, but at the end of the day I think uh, most municipal councils they try to find that compromise and I think the, the problem occurs when you have individuals that are only there for their own agendas and they don't want to listen or they don't want to compromise uh, pick your battles that's a, a term I use a lot is this a battle that I'm willing to have? Is it important enough to have? If not, then try to come up with a solution that'll work for everyone. So a lot of provinces and territories have just elected new councillors and mayors. What advice would you give uh, a new councillor who is going into this session? Because I've spoken to a few of them and they're, 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 it's an educational experience for them. They're telling me that it's not what they expected. So what advice would you give newly elected councillors or people who were thinking about running for council? The strongest advice I'd give is give yourself the first year to understand and learn. Uh, maybe sit back a little bit and uh, listen to what some of your um, counselors with experience in your administration has. Um, don't say that uh, you, you don't stand up for the things that you believe in or or, or bring those points forward, but uh, really try to get a good understanding of the reasons why decisions were made in the past and, and why the recommendations are coming forward. Um, and I think it's really important. I've seen this. I watch municipal politics. I look at what other councils are doing all the time. And I think where things get really derailed is when they start a term and they don't get together uh, kind of outside of the public to kind of gel as a strategic uh, in a strategic planning session, or they try to cheap out and do it um, in the community because they're not wanting to spend money. Um, and I understand the reasons for that, but it's really important that councils get together to um, build those relationships on a personal level because that will help bring respect into the council chambers and help everyone work together to find the solutions to the issues that everybody wants to talk about, right? Um, if, you, if you don't have that mutual respect going in, it, it makes it very difficult. And you see that with some of the conflicts uh, around Alberta uh, right now with the council just going at it. And that's not productive for the public and it's not good for taxpayers. So I want to turn to segment two now. And before I start this segment, I want to preface it by saying this. This is a conversation between myself and the mayor. This is not a direction of council. This is not a motion at council. This is his opinion. I uh, seem to get a lot of emails about this question when I ask it. Uh, oh. But in your opinion, mayor, what is the biggest issue facing the town of Edson today? The biggest issue facing the town of Edson right now um, is lack of growth of our tax base. 
Uh, we are fortunate to live in an area of the province that has uh, abundant resources. We have a, we've had a strong economy the last couple of years. The first uh, few years when I first became mayor, it was, it was a challenge. Um, but we have not had a lot of growth within our municipal uh, municipal boundaries itself. Uh, a lot of growth outside in, in the county and in the region, but not uh, within the municipality. So as costs rise, our tax revenue isn't keeping up with that. So more and more is being pushed on the existing taxpayers. And uh, there becomes a point where it's no longer affordable, right? So we're always looking at um, the cost of, of taxes and utilities and those sorts of things as compared to other municipalities. But uh, really to make things more affordable and to provide those enhanced level of service, we need that growth. So that has been a huge focus of the last council and this council is is uh, uh, trying to get that growth. So we're redoing our land use bylaw, which is some 30, 40 years old. Um, we've set up an economic development department for the first time, uh, which is doing fantastic work uh, and really uh, working with our partners such as Community Futures and um, the Chamber of Commerce to to increase our capacity and to, to see some growth. And we have some exciting things coming down the pipe, but I think that's probably the number one thing. And once we have that growth, we can address some of the other issues that we have, our infrastructure needs and our homelessness and mental health issues in our community. Also big things that we're working on. While you have some things coming down the pipeline, I want to jump on this for a few seconds here, because you're not the first mayor to talk about growth. But we need sustainable growth, I'm assuming. You can't just expect everyone to come tomorrow. You have to plan. And like you said, you're doing your land use bylaws uh, update updates to that. So that's great. But that's uh, growth is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen a year from now. It's going to be a five, 10 year pro planning process that you have to do. What do you do now, though? Because you can't look at the taxpayers and say, okay, guys, I'm sorry, but your taxes are going to continuously go up until we fix this growth issue. So what do we do now in the short term to offset the non-growth that's happening? Well, I think there's a number of things that we're doing. And, and I think things like having an economic development department and an economic development officer who's now uh, getting an understanding from our existing businesses of what they need to be successful. And we just did a, a triage report uh, that Deloitte did for us uh, through Community Futures that showed that uh, there was a very positive outlook within our business community. So, um, you know, the shop local message and making sure that that's happening, um, making sure that we're, we are attractive as a place to, to do business. Uh, we have a a housing subdivision that's kind of empty right now uh, that we haven't been selling lots. We, we joke we have a 90 year supply on the current uh, uh, rate of sale. Um, so looking at ways to lower those prices or encourage developers to come in and build build housing because housing is a huge issue for us right now uh, to find an affordable place to, to live. Um, so those are some of the more immediate things that we can do to hopefully see things happen. Um, and our and our businesses are really struggling on finding um, employees. Um, so we're a part of the Alberta renewal stream uh, that uh, uh, refugees and immigrants can come here and, and find uh, find work. So um, those are some of the things that we're currently working on. I want to talk about nimbyism for a second, because it seems to be a reoccurring theme that I'm hearing from a lot of municipalities when they talk about growth in particular. Is uh, nimbyism happening in the town of Edson? Do, is there a subsection of your community saying, we love our community the way it is, don't let it grow because we don't want it to change. We love the small town feeling. How do you balance that with the understanding that you know as mayor, and I know as a, a person who's worked in municipalities, you need to grow to survive? We don't see a lot of that. Really? Um, yeah, we don't see a, a ton of that. Um just because I guess probably because we haven't had a lot of growth, right? So, um, you know, we have we have seen some developments come forward where there's there's been pushback from the community and sometimes rightfully so. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's always having that conversation. Okay, if you want things to be status quo, that's fine, but it's going to become more and more expensive for you to live in this community because we need that additional tax base because the cost of doing uh, providing services is not decreasing. Um, as well as the expectations or the level of service from the general public is always increasing. And it's always that argument and that, that saying that we have is everybody wants everything for free. And nobody wants to pay for the things that they want. Um, so so finding that balance, um, you know, I grew up from from pretty humble beginnings. Uh, my mom was a single mom. Um, 
Uh, my grandparents raised me. Uh, my mom worked a minimum wage job all for life. And so I understand uh, very well um, the difficulties that uh, single families have, um, that low income people have in the community. I've lived it. Uh, when I was working in radio, as you know, Chris, not a lot of money uh, doing that sort of thing. What? And, and like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I know, mind blown. Um, so, so I understand that. And you know, when you become a counselor or a mayor or a politician, uh, sometimes the general public just believes you don't understand those needs. But uh, when you're elected to a position, you have to take that larger view of building that community and building that capacity. So. Um, I think that, you know, NIMBYism is not a huge issue and, and having those discussions of why that growth is necessary in order for your community to survive. Um, I think that, and I'm kind of probably opening up a can of worms here. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. What the heck? Um, in the province of Alberta, if our, if our provincial government wants to get serious about uh, decreasing costs and making things more affordable, they have to look at... Um, the systems that we have in place in terms of the amount of municipalities we have. It's ridiculous how many municipalities we have uh, within the province of Alberta. Um, and all that brings costs. When you have a community, and I'm, I'm not going to mention any names here, uh, of three, 4,000 people, they have five councillors, uh, four councillors and a mayor, and they're spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in salaries. For what? Um, that uh, We're a community of 8,400 people we struggle to survive. So I don't know how some of these smaller communities can uh, survive uh, unless they are working very well with their uh, county or regional neighbors, which we're fortunate we have a really great relationship with our county. They're fantastic. Um, but we really need to have some tough dis discussions about that. And I don't think uh, provincial politicians want to talk about that, nor do I think some of the municipal politicians want to get real because, uh, you know, those are big, big issues we need to tackle. But um, the amount of uh, governance structures that we have in this province is, is crazy. When you have areas of the province with 10,000 people and 50 politicians, um, it doesn't make any sense to me. You and I both, and I think I just lost about 10 people that I'm going to have on for the future episodes, <laughs> but hopefully I'll have those recorded by the time this episode airs. Um, I want to talk, though, about the uh, the, the budget. Because right now people are struggling. How important, you talked about your humble background, your, your upbringing, your mother living minimum wage job, but how hard was it this budget cycle? Because this is a tough year for a lot of municipalities I'm hearing. Was it tough for the town of Edson? Extremely tough for the town of Edson. Um, during COVID, we made a conscious decision to lower taxes by 5% um, in order to help our residents. It was actually more than 5% when you take the inflationary rates and, and everything that was going on. It was probably more like 7%. Um, so we we did that. We reduced the level of service for a year. However, we brought that level of service back, but never increased the taxes to pay for that level of service. So we've been uh, using our reserve funds the last couple of years. And um, so we really tried to do some things to make things more affordable. We did utility credits. We did a whole bunch of, a whole suite of things that... Um, Quite frankly, we never got any credit for, um, which is fine. Um, but now we have to readjust. And so now we've had to readjust, not not knowing at the time when we made those decisions, we're going to be dealing with um, a huge increase in inflation uh, with a war in Ukraine and supply chain issues and all those sorts of things. So the town of Edson has uh, approved a massive tax increase for this year to pay for that. I'll pay for that 5% decrease plus the inflationary pressures. Plus, uh, when we did our budget consultations, uh, the public made clear they wanted a higher level of service for things such as snow clearing. So we've included additional funds for that. Um, so it, it is going to be a pretty hard pill to swallow. And it's it was not an easy decision for council, but it was a necessary decision. Um, so I'm sure when tax notices go out, our, our phones will be busy. Um, but we hope that making this big adjustment this year, where we're going to actually save ourselves down the road from from some tougher decisions. Um, correct me if to... I'm wrong here. I apologize for interrupting, but correct me if I'm wrong here. But the town of Edson uh, the, currently is policed by the RCMP, correct? That is correct. 
So is was that a big chunk of any potential growth that you had to deal with as well? The the, the uh, salary increases that the RCMP, not saying that the RCMP aren't great people to have in your community. They are. I have family members in the RCMP. It's just municipalities are facing that budget issue because of downloading. Yeah, so there, there, there's a two-pronged issue with, with that. Um, so yeah, we had a huge increase in terms of the policing contract because the uh, the officers on the street didn't have a raise for many years. So that that was approved and council actually supports that. We believe that they have been underpaid and, and they deserve that. But that becomes a big bill for us when we have uh, 17 municipal members. Um, but uh, as far as our council is concerned, you know, um, that cost is necessary. Uh, so I think I and I I'm, don't quote me on the exact percentage. I think it was between one and two percent was just that. Um but on the other side, we also lost a whole bunch of fine revenue because the provincial government uh, took a bigger slice of the fine revenue that we generate. Um, so that was hundreds of thousands of dollars that we had to include as well. Um, so we got hit on both sides. Um, and the provincial government, I'm going to take a little bit of a shot at them, um, that they've cut policing budgets, municipal policing budgets right across this province. Uh, the justice minister at the time just said that he did not cut policing, which was an absolute lie. Um, he has. And unfortunately, municipal taxpayers are now paying for that. I want to talk about your residents of your community, because you've talked about the issues that are important to you. But if I go talk to the people of Edson right now and I go talk to 100 of them, they will all give me 100 different issues. Some of them will be macro issues, healthcare, education, infrastructure, policing. Some will be micro issues like I need my pothole fixed. I need my sidewalk repaired. I need my park upgraded. How do you as council, and particularly as mayor, as the lead person in council, take the micro issues and look at them and plan for who is going to get their issue fixed this year and who is not going to get their issue fixed until 2024, 2025? Because you cannot get blood out of a stone after you've bled it dry. So how do you do that as a council in your community? Well, I think that's one of the great things about council. We all come from different circles and, and engage with different residents in our community, all of which have uh, differing points of view. Um, some people, it's all about the roads, right? It's always about the roads. And I and I always have this argument, I can spend $40 million repaving roads and you're still not going to be happy because there's still going to be potholes. Uh, we live in Muskeg here in Edson and uh, uh, we get a lot of complaints about the roads. And I, and I ask, okay, which road is the problem? And they say the main thoroughfare, second or fourth avenue. Well, that's not a municipal road. That's a provincial road. Um, so you're talking to the wrong level of government. Of course, we're lobbying to try to get uh, pavement down there as well. Um, so I think for us, it's all about um, our asset management plan and where the greatest need is. Um, at the end of the day, clean drinking water is the biggest need. You know, um, So we focus a lot of dollars on, on that. We have stormwater management issues. So some of this stuff isn't really sexy. Uh, waste management and, uh, you know, when you have a brand new wastewater treatment plant, those things aren't seen, felt, uh, but are the key infrastructure in our community. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that means things like roads, uh, you have to deal with a little bit of a rougher road because uh, those issues uh, take priority. And unfortunately, there's lots of regulatory pieces that we have to adhere to. And that that drives a lot of the costs up for us as well. So um, and, and trying to find that appropriate balance. We can't spend all of our money in roads. We can't spend all of our money on water. So we're also investing in, in assets like a, a new multiplex and expanding our library and uh, things of that nature. You, you talked about the provincial uh, road that goes through your community. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to generalize here, but I talk to a lot of people in my community of Calgary, and I can tell you that some people don't understand the different levels of government. They do not understand what an issue that a provincial government deals with compared to a municipal government. How often are you as mayor and council dealing with other provincial or federal issues that you are getting asked by your residents to deal with because it's important to them? Because they will come to you and say, this is my issue. I don't care what level of government you are, you have to fix it because we've elected you. How often are you as mayor and council dealing with provincial or federal issues? And I know federal probably not as much, but provincial issues. Uh, definitely a lot of provincial issues come our way, but I know our MLA, like he's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And his office gets municipal calls, right? 
especially when they don't like the answer that we give. Uh, <laughs> um, so they call the MLA and say, you tell them to do that. Um, so we, we do see a lot of that. Um, and it's trying to educate people on where the issue, where the person is that they need to talk to. Uh, unfortunately, some folks in our community think that we use it as an excuse. Uh, but I'm sorry, we don't, we're not taking over the provincial highway. And that's, we can't just go and fix potholes on the provincial highway. It's not a responsibility. Um, so um, it's, it's always a balance. We get healthcare issues. We get stuff for the school division as well. So a lot of times it's just putting, pointing them in the right direction. A lot of them are, a lot of times are happy that we say, okay, that's who I need to talk to. Uh, but it's sometimes really good for us to, to hear those issues as well, because we can talk to our provincial counterparts and say, Hey, there's an issue here. Um, you know, what's, what's happening with that? Or we can provide clarity because we may be in the know on, on that particular file, um, that where we can share information with the general public. And, um, you know, I, I've been criticized because I, I've been vocal about some provincial government initiatives. Um, I have a, a great working relationship with her MLA. Um, I'm, I'm a conservative leaning guy. I worked for the conservative government previously. Uh, I've been called in uh, for some reason, uh, a socialist. I don't know why. Uh, but at the end of the day, as, as the mayor or as a council, it doesn't matter what the, the party is in power. You have to um, work with them as best you can. But I'm also going to call out things that I see that are, are not appropriate or, or impacting my community in a negative way. Uh, and I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to be silent, especially on some of the major issues. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all have to work together. And that's that's always our goal. My last question in this segment before we turn to my last one is this. If I came to talk to you at the end of 2023, at the end of 2023, I call you up and I say, Kevin, I want to follow up on this interview that we did. What would you hope that the town of Edson will have completed or have gotten a good chunk started to make you say, OK, we ended 2023 on a good year because X was done or started? Oh, that's a big question because there's a lot of things that we've been working on for years that are kind of starting to happen now. So I, I mentioned the land use bylaw that will be completed by the end of the year. So that's very exciting because that's going to set us up hopefully for future success uh, in terms of being open for business and, and encouraging development in our community. Um, for, for our council and uh, our regional partners at Yellow County, it's uh, getting our uh, multi-use facility built. Uh, we had to reset, unfortunately, due to price escalations. Uh, this is something that our community has been talking about for over 20 years. Um, it became uh, uh, a partnership with the county about five years ago, and we've been working hard on it. We're finally at the place where we're probably going to be uh, starting construction here this year. So that's going to be the exciting part to have, you know, some new arenas, a new pool, and uh, uh, some recreation spaces. Plus, we're also expanding and renovating our library, which is key. And I think both of those will be uh, pretty big focus uh, this year and, and moving into 2024. Now, I want to turn to my last segment of the show, and I, I'm cautious of time here, so I'll try and make this as quick as possible, uh, Mayor. Um, often, I find myself driving around this great province of ours in this great country. I am a tourist. I love touring. And we have listeners from across this great country and around the world. As a tourist, and I always like to ask this question to counselors because I like to find out what the hidden gems of your community are. Mayor, as a tourist who I'm going to be coming to Edson later this year, what should I stop and see in your community? And what are some of the hidden gems that people need to take a detour on their way to another place? Well, we know a lot of people head to Jasper National Park, come through BC, uh, heading to head, heading east. Um, so first of all, I'm going to show you here. Uh, you're going to want to come by and see Eddie in the Centennial Park. Uh, get a picture with him and then stop at the Galloway Station Museum. Sherry and the crew there are fantastic, and they will uh, fill you in with all the history of Edson. Um, and you'll be able to see our beautiful museum. Um, it's it's uh, top caliber. And then uh, if you're in, one of the big things I encourage if you do come is uh, check out our downtown core. We have lots of uh, great shops and uh, local businesses uh, from uh, from retail to to all sorts of things to so do that. And then if you're into biking, uh, we have an eight acre skills bike park uh, out at uh, Wilmore Park, just outside of Edson. Uh, it's brand new. It's only a couple years old and it's absolutely fantastic. It's for all skill levels. Uh, and there's bike parks as well in Hinton and uh, throughout Yellow County with pump tracks. 
Um, if that's not your thing, you have kids, we have a fantastic spray park uh, as well that you can check out uh, while you're here. But lots of stuff to do outdoors. Um, if you want to head down Highway 47, uh, down towards Rob and Cadman and, and explore some of the uh, uh, backcountry, it's it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, uh, we have fantastic snowmobile trails as well in the wintertime um, that you can uh, check out as well. But what about yourself? After a stressful day at council, after a long day at work, where do you go to decompress? Where do you go to just let it all go and just recenter yourself? And before you answer, I'm going to say this to, that I've said to every other councillor mayor, you cannot say your own house because that is in your community. But where in your community do you actually go to decompress? Well, um, if you talk to my wife, I don't decompress very well. Um, so... Um, <laughs> So, Best answer I've gotten on that <laughs> that question ever. Um, how can I put that? I'm gonna, I'm one of those guys that are completely honest. Um, you know, uh, after you're dealing with a whole bunch of issues all every day, sometimes you you just kind of want to uh, disappear a little bit. Um, so I, I'm pretty much a homebody. I don't uh, do a lot, but um, you know, just going for a walk on our trail systems to clear your head sometimes. Um, getting together with friends, uh, you know, going to one of our local establishments here. Um, one of the things I really like to do is explore and I like to go for a drive and, and sometimes that's visiting neighboring communities. Uh, we are very fortunate. Jasper's just down, down the road. So we'll, we'll head down to Jasper, maybe have lunch in Hinton, um, and, uh, explore up into the Grand Cache country as well. It's fantastic. Uh, unfortunately I got some really good friends. So do some quadding and, and things of that nature and, um, my, uh, that's, that's probably what I would, I would give you as my answer. Um, but a lot of times it's just vegging and watching TV or watching a hockey game or something. Understandable. It's only joking. I'm glad that you're actually willing to push back on that question, but I want to end on this question and take as long as you want to answer this question. Mayor, what makes the town of Edson such a unique place to live, to work and to raise a family? We are essentially located between Jasper and and, uh, and Edmonton, so we are in a good good strategic location. Uh, we have, if you're into the outdoors, we got so much to do. Um, we're a very environmentally conscious community, despite being in the heart of oil and gas country. Um, so th I, I think that's what separates us. And and if you come to our community, especially we have uh, art in the park uh, out in Centennial Park, which is in the picture behind me here. Um, so throughout the summer, there's always events and activities and, um, Edson kind of has this reputation, I guess, of, a you know, a blue collar town. Um, but we are very diverse with people from, uh, from the Ukraine, from, uh, Philippines, um, uh, uh, from India. It, it's, it, when you come to some of these events, you get to see the diversity of our community and it's absolutely fantastic to watch and see and people come together, um, a very friendly community, um, and one that really rallies behind each other. So when something, unfortunately, we've seen more than our fair share of tragedy and um, unfortunate incidences, but the people always come together and support one another. And I think that's one of the, the fantastic things about uh, about our community um, is, is that understanding and, and the willingness to help each other out. Mayor Zahara, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sitting down and taking time out of your busy schedule to do this today. It was an honor and pleasure, and I say this to a lot of people, but I'm going to say it to you as well. The town of Edson is lucky to have you at its council table, so congratulations on leading a great community, and I look forward to visiting it later on this year. Thank you so much. Looking forward to meeting in person, Chris, and uh, we'll certainly uh, give you a, a world-class tour of our our community. And uh, I'll just mention too, we have a fantastic golf course. So if you're into golf, uh, be sure to check that now, out. Well. Now you've got my perk. You had me interested in museums. Now you said golf course. Let's do it. I'm, I, think, muse I think you should come to the mayor's golf tournament coming up here in June. Raising money for the Edson Animal Rescue Society. I think it'd be a perfect day for you. I think that would be a perfect day. I might buy my tickets right after this. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy, and it helps us be a better people. Tune in tomorrow as we head to Saskatchewan, to Weyburn, Saskatchewan, to sit down with their mayor. Until then, talk to you later. And remember, everyone, keep talking.